suppose we are going to develop a library system which is going to be similar but not identical to the one that's in using UML. Key thing we have to understand is the outline of the requirements we have together with an understanding of what we control and what we don't control. Key thing you don't control is the users of your system. They split up into groups. Let's suppose that an important role that a user of our system might play is that they might be a library member. We represent a role that a user can play using an actor, a stick figure, with a name which is capitalised, in this case, a library member. That's outside the boundary of our system. We can ask the library members to do certain things. We don't control their behaviour. We're not designing the library user. What do they want to be able to do with our system? Let's say the basic thing they want to be able to do is borrow a book. That means our system has to provide functionality to support borrowing a book. So we have a use case here, labelled with a strong verb, borrow, borrow book in a verb phrase. And it's the library member who's interacting with the system to carry out that piece of functionality. So we connect the actor with the use case via an association, a straight line like that. That's our simplest possible UML use case diagram.